Lindsey Graham, a candidate for president, uh, one of the guys who is most serious about doing something serious about uh, ISIS. Senator Graham, thank you for taking the time. Welcome to the program. Uh, so I just Thanks, want John. your reaction to what you heard from the president this morning. <laughs> Completely dumbfounded. All I can say is I've never seen someone so disconnected from reality as Barack Obama when it comes to ISIL. Has he learned nothing from the massacre in Paris, the Russian jetliner, the bombing in Lebanon? There seems to be a disconnect from the strategy that he's implemented and how bad it's failing in his view of the world. So what would I do? I would take the fight to ISIL. You've got two choices, John. We're at war with ISIL. I choose to have the war in their backyard, not ours. And President Obama's insistence on not changing his strategy is going to lead to another 9-11. You know, uh, Senator Graham, the, uh, a lot of my callers who agree with you are still very, very concerned about U.S. troops over there. So what would it take? John? Hello? Yeah, can Hello. you hear me, Senator Graham? Yes, I'll be glad to tell you my plan, okay? Okay. Number one, to the callers, I understand you're tired of the Mideast, but radical Islam is not tired of fighting you. We can't be tired of fighting them. There is no way to destroy ISIL from the air. So let's just walk through this. An air campaign is not working. It will never work. If you want to destroy ISIL, you have to go in on the ground. Does it matter to us if they're destroyed? I believe a second 9-11 is coming unless we put these guys on the run and destroy them. And that means a ground component. The good news is that 90% of the ground forces I envision come from the Arab world in Turkey. About 10%, less than 10,000. American troops, along with NATO forces, would be needed to destroy ISIL. That's the good news. The bad news is that what Obama's doing is not working, and it's never going to work. And if we don't go come up with a ground component, we're going to get hit here at home. That's what Senator I would Graham, tell callers. Why has the president failed to convince Turkey to get into the fight so far? The reason that no Arab army and the Turkey, that Turkey won't follow us is because he does not want to put Assad on the table. The Arabs and Turkey have the same goals we do. Destroy ISIL because they're coming after them and uh, replace Assad. The problem is that Obama has a hands-off policy when it comes to Assad. The people that we trained, the CIA did, to take Assad out, the Russians bombed, and we didn't do a thing. So Turkey and the Arab world are not going to go in on the ground to fight ISIL uh, and give Syria to the Iranians by keeping Assad in power. If I were president, I'd do the following. I'd get Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, the entire Arab world with Turkey, France if they want to come, would create a big army, 10% us, 90% them, would go in on the ground and destroy the caliphate. We would take Waqqa away from ISIL and kill every one of these bastards we could find. We would hold the territory, and we would tell Assad, you're leaving. And if Russia and Iran wants to fight for the butcher of Damascus, they're welcome to do so. But they'd be fighting the entire Arab world, Turkey, and Western nations. If Assad stays, this war never ends. He must go. ISIL, Senator Germany, Lindsay. Assad's Japan. That's what I would do. And if we don't do that, this war never ends. Senator Graham, I know you're on the campaign trail. I can uh, hear you're uh, you're in an airport or some such. In, in, yeah, I am in the airport. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to call and I, go out there and hammer this hard. It's your opportunity. And, and, and let me tell you this, John. We need a timeout on Syrian refugees. The one thing I've learned from Paris is that we need to have a timeout on bringing refugees into this country until we we'll have a system that we think will work. So I'm calling for a timeout on Syrian refugees. I'm calling for going on offense. There are 20 ways that people can get this country. Refugee status is one. I want to hit them before they hit us. I want an away game when it comes to ISIL, not a home game. And to your callers, I have a plan that can win this war, and we cannot afford to lose 
radical Islam is coming to our doorsteps. If we don't hit them over there, I've got a plan that will win, and it will rely on the region. They'll pay for this war. We paid for the last two. Hey, uh, let me ask you one more thing. If by some weird chance we should be in, you know, January 2017 and there is a President Trump, would you advise him? I would do anything I can to help my nation. And I would work with President Trump or anybody who is the commander-in-chief of our armed forces because I care so much about those that would be under his command. I think I'm the best qualified to be commander-in-chief. I think I can beat Hillary Clinton. She represents failed foreign policy and domestic policy that will never work. 35 trips to Iraq and Afghanistan in the last decade on my part, 30 years in the Air Force. But if it's President Trump, if it's President anybody, I'm going to help defend my nation. But I think the best way I can defend our nation is to make me commander-in-chief and come up with a plan that will destroy radical Islam before they destroy us. Senator Graham, I thank you very much for your time. I hope you'll come on again, and good luck. Thanks, John. I appreciate it very much. Uh, All right. Senator Lindsey Graham.